All right, for my spot illustration, I'm showing you how to digitally ink it in a raster format in Photoshop. It's important to have a high resolution. Sometimes digital inkers will even do it at a higher than print resolution, like around 500 pixels per inch at the size they want to print it. I recommend for this class at least 10 by 10 inches for your illustration. It should fit within that and a resolution of our studio, you know, 350 or higher. The problem is if you have too high a resolution, like if I'm doing 1200 resolution, it will create really, really fine lines, but it will be really slow in processing them. And I don't want the computer to, to lag on me, especially when you have smoothing turned on, that can take a little bit longer. So you can see how this is a little bit wavier and weirder than this. It's a slightly different quality, but it's also a little bit more accurate to my lines. So there's always a contrast between smooth and accurate. And so you'll, you'll figure out your own pace. And this is with a locked size, not a pressure sensitive size. And then when I want to move on, I go like this. Now this is a common problem for inking. It can be really hard to do certain curves and certain lines from certain angles. So there's this tool underneath the hand tool called Rotate View. And Rotate View allows you, just like if you were inking it by hand, to change the angle so that you have something that feels more natural for your curve and your tablet. And so you can ink parts of it at an angle. Don't worry about little things like that where the ink comes together. That's just part of inking in general. And there's a reason you only see this in YouTube videos when it's on time lapse, because it can take a long time, right? So that angle, I was going the reverse direction. That didn't really work well at this angle. So, to get back to the original angle, I just double click on the tool and it will take me back to its original. And I'm a little bit more comfortable this way. Now this is one of three methods I'm gonna show you. And because my design is fairly symmetrical, I don't need to ink all of it to start. I need to ink like half of it. I'll just do the eye and then show you what I mean. And of course I can, if I want to redo parts, I can just take my lasso and delete those. I have my other layers locked. And if I want to try it with, with a pressure sensitive brush, which I would usually do for this kind of inking, I can do that too. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And now I'm able to make the line weight thicker or thinner based on how hard I press, even if that's pretty subtle. <laughs> I'm speeding this up a little. It just depends how accurate to your sketch you want to be. Okay, so if that's my design, and I'm working with symmetry, then I just bring a guide for anyone working with symmetry, move it to the middle, it will actually stick to the middle, then I just grab half of it, duplicate it, duplicate it again, and then on that second duplicate, command T, Right click, flip horizontal, hold down shift, and just bring it over. So digital, if I want something clean, that's going to give me a much better symmetrical design than if I were trying to freehand it, even off of a really clean drawing. Okay, so that's one method. That is the, the raster within Photoshop method. For an, an illustration like this, with lots of lines. I could go another way. 
if I was going to do this all in Photoshop and I know that these lines are going to be solid black, I might choose to do a rigid, not pressure sensitive size, and I might choose to make it large enough that it fills the space. Let's try 100 pixels. But I might turn it smoothing on quite a bit. And then I can just fill this as I go. Because inking is an important part of this process. Kind of like your logos, your inks become the black shapes of your spot illustration. And that can make it go faster. And that might be like the end result I want anyway. And then maybe that's what I want for that line, but maybe I want to go to a smaller rigid size. These are called technical, technical pins. In the good old days when I was in art school, to do this kind of design work, you used a product called rapidograph pins, which are really expensive, refillable, basically um, rollerball pins that came in all these precise measurements. You always had to take really good care of them and clean them fully. But unlike having to ink by hand, if I mess up, I can erase, I can hit Command Z. And inking is very different than sketching. I was always told that there are two types of like drawing artists when it comes to digital inking or any kind of inking. We have those that have what's called an animator's line, which is really clean and confident. And you can just tell this from people's sketches. And then you have people that have like a sketching line or a drafting line, which is more like how I draw, which is things are broken up into little parts, you know, and like my curves look like they're furry in my pencil sketches. So when you digitally ink, if you have that more kind of drafters or sketchers line, you need to re like limit that impulse in yourself so you can just have clean, uninterrupted, and confident line art. Right? And the smoothing feature definitely helps. So that's actually looking pretty good. That might be a good way for me to finish it in this method. But there are other methods. So I'm going to show you that. Let me go ahead and save this. In case I want to return to it. Always recommend you save your work as soon as you create multiple layers. You want to save it as a Photoshop file, a PSD. This is assignment five. Uh, I'm going to call this raster digital line art or inking. Save it to the desktop for now. Okay, the other thing I can do is I can take that clean sketch that I used in Photoshop and composited in that, that star, and I can print it onto a piece of paper as something to ink by hand. And when I print it on paper, I don't want it to fill the page. I want it to take up about a quarter of a letter size page. That's going to make my line art a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to change the scale from 100% which is filling the paper to something more like 60 or 65 percent. It's actually a little bit larger than I sketched it, but a good size for inking it. Okay, and then I'm going to hit print. What did I save my file as? Just as a PSD, as a Photoshop file, because it has all of these layers. Okay, so it's printing at the back. I've already printed one out. This is what it looks like. And then I'm going to use tracing vellum 
It's basically a high-end type of tracing paper. Tracing paper works too. Tracing paper is made with wood pulp, so it's cloudier. Tracing vellum is made with 100% plastic. And I just like to kill the earth in those little ways, just to remind it who's boss. But the benefit of this tracing vellum is that this plastic is just, not only does it last forever, but it's just a little bit easier to see through. So then you put it, even though it is more expensive. So I use Canson, Canson tracing vellum. And then I put it over the image. Oh, that's the wrong one. Over the image. And then I use a permanent inking pen. My shirt can go. Always losing them. Just have a bunch. <laughs> But I use a permanent inking pen, a permanent black pen. Let's pretend this is one. And I ink. Here you see someone that's used a Sharpie in the class before. It should be permanent because you don't want it to smear, right? And all pens will smear on the vellum until they're dry. So you do have to be careful. So I did this. And I actually used a Uniball pen. But any permanent black pen will do. And so you can see I traced right over it onto this vellum. Now vellum's great. It's a lot cleaner than pencil. Here's my original pencil sketch. Because pencil is powder that goes into paper and is ground in, so it's soft. Ink is a puddle that goes into the paper. And so the though its edges will be slightly soft, the center of it will be solid, like a puddle. Now I have to scan those inks. So I'm going to go to the back of the room to our scanner. Let's give you a little image in the video here. And these are just simple desktop scanners. A lot of like home computer, uh, home printers also have a scanner built in. We have a rather old Epson one. And what I do is just like a photocopier. I'll demonstrate this to you in the class. But for the video, you can just watch any of these kind of things about how to scan a document on a computer. You do like a preview, you select around the area you want to scan, then you set the resolution you want to scan it at. And when I scan my inks, there's no reason to set a low resolution. You want a high resolution, right? So I actually scan them at around 650 pixels per inch to get the cleanest possible line, line art even though it is still raster, it's still pixel based. Okay, so I'm gonna pause this video and I'm gonna show the class how we scan at the back of the room. All right, now we have returned from going to the back of the room, scanning in that inked, hand inked piece of vellum with permanent ink. And then from the scanner, I moved the scan to dropbox.com, the same place where we put our print files, and I put it into my folder, which is in flatten TIFF files to print. Find my folder, and then it's this one right here. And if I go over to the right with these little dots, I have the option to download it. So this is just the scan, which is a pixel-based image, a raster image, just directly from the scanner. And our scanner is set up to scan it just a little bit darker than it is in person. So if I look at it in preview, you'll see how it looks kind of gray. But that is because either using preview, which I actually like, I go to tools and I say adjust color. And I don't even need to worry about messing it up because I already have the original saved in my Dropbox. I can always download it again. And under adjust color, instead of just saying auto levels, which doesn't do too much, remember you have these histogram sliders and I'm gonna push the whites like all past all that kind of gray and the shadows that are in there. And you can see that because I transported my inks from home and I had to wedge them between some paper, I had a little bit of smearing right here, or maybe that happened while I was inking it. So it's not like hand inks are gonna be perfect, but it's one way you can go about getting it. And it's a lot cleaner than scanning just a pencil sketch. Okay, now I want to push that dark slider until those inks become solid puddles. Here you, 